Here's one more quick video to get you ready for the 3-4 to 3-6 quiz. And I just wanted to show one example of what happens if you're looking at the second derivative. So much of our focus on the visual problems, you're given a first derivative and you're asked a question about the original. But you can have problems that you're given the second derivative. So that's what we have here. So this graph that's in purple right here, this is the second derivative. It will usually say in the problem that the second derivative is graphed. And a lot of times, it'll be written right next to the graph. So there's no mistaking what's going on. Whenever you have this situation, you're not going to be asked as many questions about your original function because the second derivative really is just telling us about the concavity and points of inflection of the original, not all of the things that the first derivative tells us. So what you see down in the left corner of this video is it's asking when does f of x, when is it concave up, when is it concave down, and when does it have any points of inflection. So what you're doing with this is, again, you're dividing your graph into a top half and a bottom half. Your top half is where we have a positive second derivative, which means those are the intervals and they're x intervals where your original function is concave up. And then your bottom half is the negative region where your interval is concave down. So when I'm writing my concave up intervals, I'm looking to see when does my when is my second derivative above the x-axis. So that happens from the beginning of the graph all the way until we get to this point, which is the point negative 4. And then it's below. And then once we get to this point, which is x equals 4, it actually stays above the rest of the time. So we're going to write 4 to infinity. It is concave down when it's below the axis, and that happens between negative 4 and positive 4. For your points of inflection, your points of inflection are going to occur whenever it crosses over from above to below or below to above. So what I've circled is a point of inflection, and this is a point of inflection. But this point right here, we call it a possible point of inflection. It was the place where the second derivative did equal 0, but it didn't switch. It didn't go from above to below. It didn't go from below to above. Kind of the same as whenever you're looking at a first derivative graph and it touches it and continues going up where it's a critical value but not an extrema. This is the same idea. You have points of inflection on this one at x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 4. We do not have a point of inflection at x equals 6. And again, there are no specific types of points of inflection, so that's all I can say. And I cannot tell you the y coordinates because I don't have the original function. Let's just give you one example. I know it's a quick video, but it's a quick example to show you what happens when the second derivative is shown instead of the first derivative.